Hey dudes, welcome back to the bench. Today I want to talk to you guys about how everyone knows that you're a biter. I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, I'm only kind of kidding. Alright, so check this out. I, I really want to talk to you guys about the science behind biting, why it doesn't work, which I know we already covered that a little bit before, so we're not going to spend too much time on that, but more so, why nobody is fooled and how everyone can tell that you're biting. Now before we get into today's shenanigans, I gotta let you guys know my community is gonna get into a friendly battle with tactical styles. If you want to partake in this, all you gotta do is do the name Unity in your books, can't be digital, can't be on a wall, and submit it over to tactical styles. But with that said, I'll include more information at the end of the video. So the secret to biting, here's how it works. New graffiti artists tend to bite. They tend to kind of copy other people's stuff. And regardless of their intentions, regardless of their motives, none of that matters. The reason people could tell you're biting is because of the disparity between the style you're trying to do versus your actual elements of of art. Now, it's important to note, we're talking about in the books here, right? With your typical mediums, your pencil, I don't have any pencils by me, I, I have a studio right here, how do I not have a pencil by me? Regardless, it's about the typical mediums like your pencil, pen, marker. Not specialty mediums like oil paint, airbrush, watercolor, spray paint, so on and so forth. Those are all specialty mediums. And to get good with those mediums, you have to specialize in those mediums. So we're not talking about that, because new graffiti arts are people who don't specialize in those mediums, don't specialize in those mediums. So we're talking about your basic mediums, your elements of art are the things that progress the fastest. Line, shape, form, value, space, color, texture. These things get better than any other fundamental in any other art form faster, especially line. And the reason for that is because, well, you always have to use these fundamentals. They're present in everything you do. So when you sit down to draw, you're always using lines. You're always using shapes to some extent. You can sometimes use forms, you oftentimes use value, and for graffiti, you oftentimes use color. If you're adding 3D to your graffiti, you're using space, and graffiti almost never uses texture unless you're doing some more advanced stuff. So these things, they tend to level up faster than something like letter structure, negative space management, letter name weight, letter name positioning, and flow. And that's all style is. Style is the exaggeration of these things. So when you're a new graffiti artist and you're trying to do a really fancy S, or you're really trying to go ahead and rock a wild style, or you're trying to do a 3D piece, or you're trying to do anything that is above your skill level and you're copying people when you do it, people are seeing the amount of style you're adding to the letter, and then they're looking at your elements of art. They're looking at your shapes. They're looking at your lines. And those are usually the two big dead giveaways. And when your lines and your shapes aren't really adding up, for the letters you're trying to do, people can immediately tell this guy's new. Because if you had the skill level, the experience to think about and conceptualize a letter to the style that you're trying to do it, then you would have the prerequisite knowledge of line and shapes. But since you messed up line and shape, everyone knows that you don't have this prerequisite knowledge, and as a result, your letter must have been copied. That's the only explanation for it. The issue with this is when they're doing an extension, it might be to fill negative space, but when you take that extension and you slap it onto your piece, it's not serving that purpose. And even if it is, it's not serving it in the same way. And this causes your extension to fail, which also causes your fundamental to fail, which causes everything to crumble apart. This is why I put so much emphasis on keep it simple, practice the basics. This is why you have to take all style out of your work and really focus down on those core fundamentals. That way you can understand the science behind how letter structures function. And this knowledge will allow you to look at other people's work and break down the science behind how their letter structures function, which will then let you take that information and apply it to your piece, as opposed to taking little motifs that you're trying to graft onto your piece. And some people like to believe that, oh, you know, copying is how you learn in the beginning. And while, yes, sure, a lot of artists learn in the beginning by copying, you don't really learn that way unless you're doing a proper study, unless you're doing like a proper master study like fine artists do. But in order to do this, you have to have enough of an understanding of the fundamentals to be able to break down the master you're studying. So let's kind of walk through the steps of how that works, say for something like your typical master study in fine art. You would go ahead and paint a Leonardo da Vinci piece and you would try to make it look identical to what he has. Along the while, you're examining literally all of the elements of art, line, shape, form, value, space, color, texture, as well as the art form specific fundamentals of anatomy, gesture, pose, expression, so on and so forth. You know, perspective, composition, all of that good stuff. And you're also studying the technique. You are literally mentally listing all of these things off and you're analyzing all of those as you go ahead and you work. But notice how this requires a deep knowledge of the fundamentals in order to be able to do in the first place. You can't do a master study effect until you already know the basics. So when you're a new artist trying to do a master study, what really ends up happening is you more so generalize certain motifs in their image and you extract those from their image and you plop them onto yours with a couple of changes here and there, creating an amalgamation of graffiti and graffiti artists and their elements that they like to include in their work, which creates something hopefully unique. Oftentimes that isn't the case, but hopefully unique. Now, when you do this for decades and decades and decades, you then have created this family tree, if you will, of 
your own pieces that ends up after generations creating something that is unique but that is an extremely ineffective way to learn once again we can cycle back literally to any art form as an example never in the history of art has an artist sat somebody down and only exclusively taught by saying copy people and then change it a little bit and then copy more people and then change it a little bit that's not how it works right there's things we can learn there's ways we can improve our knowledge and the more we understand these fundamentals the more that we understand these basics the more we can extract it from other people and that doesn't result in you taking little elements from their stuff it results in you understanding why they did certain things because art is really just a problem solving activity you have a blank paper what art form you want to do you solve that problem you do the art form you want we decide we're doing graffiti all right well what name are we doing we go ahead and begin writing all right well how do we want this letter to be we go ahead and we illustrate the solution we illustrate how we want the letter to be all right we have a little bit too much negative space around here well i remember mad c handled it this way and i remember dame handled it that way and i remember does handled it this other way maybe i want to go ahead and kind of tilt the letter this way and throw an extension here notice in this hypothetical here we didn't necessarily take somebody's extension we more so knew that an extension can solve this problem and we use our own extension to do it this is the process of learning this is how you get better this is what it really takes to get a professional knowledge level and skill level at the art form from there if you want to go ahead and specialize in any medium if you want to do graffiti with brushes or you want to do graffiti with spray paint or you want to do graffiti with airbrushes then you have to go ahead and specialize with that medium but you still understand the art form you still understand the basics you still understand how it works to a science level and that's really all it takes so me and a good friend rage to the guy who's behind tactical styles we decided to kind of team up again we worked together in the past in order to bring you guys a friendly battle something to kind of knock you guys out of your comfort zone so there's no rules for this battle you can go about it however you want you can add characters full-fledged background the only requirement is that it's inside of a sketchbook and the word is unity when you complete your piece DM it to tactical styles I got a link to him in the description down below be sure to go ahead and check that out and down in the description as well you'll find the due date for all this as well all right I think that pretty much wraps up today's video guys if you want to learn more about graffiti then check out the best how to do graffiti playlist right up here and we got more graffiti content right down here well all that said thank you guys for watching I really do appreciate it. I'll catch you guys back here next week